Oh, I didn't see you there. Fucking a devog number. 16. 15. those of you new around here, my name is Thomas Randall and welcome to the series where I develop my game Arcane from almost scratch in C. In last week's video I teamed up with Mr. Flurry and rewrote Arcane on top of his telescope engine. So this week I'm going to be picking up where I left off, starting things out by fixing up this absolutely scuffed main menu. Holy shit this is a work of art. I took the time to learn how Ryan's immediate mode UI works, then gave it a little touch up. Still obviously temporary, but temporary does not have to equal scuffed. Sometimes. Before I got started on the core focus for this week though, and since I now know how to use the UI module, I added in a very basic performance profile to um, profile performance. <laughs> it was at this point that I realized I've been running on integrated graphics this entire time. Ah, uh, all right. <laughs> oh, look at that speed. Speaking of speed, I then put in a debugging slow motion button because uh, why not? This week we're going to be working on items and an inventory system, so I went about drawing up a quick little sword to act as our first item. Now in order for us to get items rendering in between the character's hand and the body, I needed to violently rip off his arm and put the item in between like so. I had to implement a new linked animation feature to sync up the newly decapitated arm with the rest of his body. Then after that, to get everything rendering in the right order, I wrote a simple sorting algorithm. And by rote, I of course mean copy and pasted from Stack Overflow. And then to keep the item in the same spot as the hand during the animation, I implemented a pretty scuffed socketing system. And there we have it, he's holding an item. Ooh. It looks a little off because I don't have rotation implemented yet, but that's pretty much all we need for now. All we need to do next is give the player a means of interacting with this item, and that's where this whole inventory system comes in. While this game is about magic, I'm not going to let myself use that as a crutch for gameplay. I want things to be realistic, but not monotonous. So, I drew up plans for the inventory system with that in mind. First of all, I want to keep the hotbar small, maybe two or three slots to begin with. Now these item slots are going to be limited to tools and weapons only, so no resources or food or anything. And they'll also be physically rendered onto the player when not directly held, so uh, you could imagine a sword being just sheathed over here or something, I don't know, something along those lines. To start things off, I implemented a new item component. This bad boy will hold all of our item related data, and to render this as an actual object in the world, all we need to do is attach a position, sprite, and some physical collider components. Heck yeah. We've got our very first item rendering in the game world, but it seems to be colliding with everything, including the player, which uh, just ain't it, chief. So to fix this, I added in collision masking, which will let us provide the collider with a list of types to test against. So if we don't want our item to collide against the player, but still want it to collide against everything in the world, then we just get rid of the player. Now, since items will be moving constantly between the inventory and the actual world, we'll need to be able to strip away and attach different components at will. So I went ahead and implemented that. And for debug purposes, I added in a new little window that displays all of the active entities within the world. This will be more detailed in the future once I get Ryan's code generation tool, Datadesk, integrated. Link in the description. But for now, all we'll print to the interface is the entity name. At the same time, I also added in dynamic magic with the entity array, which will allow us to delete entities and replace them efficiently without wasting any slots. Now continuing on with the items, I needed a way of picking one up and and for some absolutely dumbass reason, I thought that creating some sort of trigger thing would be the way to go. I was probably tired of some shit because that's just not at all useful. But feeling like a proud father of my latest accomplishment, I put the unsolved problem in the rearview mirror and moved on to creating a new storage component. We've got items, so naturally we need a place to put them. And from this newly implemented component, I created a backpack. To see what goodies are stored in this bad boy, I wrote up a quick user interface to drill the contents of it. As it stands, we've got no way of actually interacting with this item, so it's time for some inventory development. What the fuck have I done? Now remember like 30 seconds ago when I said I hadn't actually implemented a proper solution for picking up items? Well, I got a good night's sleep and went about a proper implementation the next morning. Instead of having a fixed trigger for each item, whenever the player presses the interaction button, which I'm down to E, a sort of temporary collider shape thingy will detect all overlaps and loop through the results accordingly. But thinking that my new collision logic was faulty somehow, I implemented a cool little debug line system. 
which will draw temporary lines that fade away after a certain period of time. Applying this new debug tool to the collider, I quickly realized that nothing whatsoever was wrong with it. I just hadn't given the item the proper flag to be picked up by the system to begin with. So uh, it was just doing its job a little too well. And would you look at that, we can pick good old Shia LaBeouf back up again. The next step in our little inventory journey is getting a hotbar going. Like I said earlier, I want to keep things a bit grounded and not have like nine different hotbar slots. After all, he's not some fucking retarded octopus. So yeah, we're going to start out with two. This will definitely be upgradable as the game and the story progresses though. After getting the slots in for the hotbar, I needed to actually make it function properly. I did this by mapping each slot to its corresponding number on the keyboard and then integrated that with the hand socketing system that I implemented in the start of the video. And there we have it, a hotbar. Now we don't want to be able to chuck any old item in the hotbar, only the things that the player will actually be able to use, like tools and weapons. So as much as it pains me to say, we're going to have to segregate Shire. Do it! I did this by adding flags to each item, which allows us to easily distinguish between different types of items and mask out our logic accordingly. Beautiful. I then went to polish off the inventory system by squashing a few bugs and making everything behave normally, and then moved on to putting in some more inventory management operations, such as stack combining, stack splitting and quick dropping. I also made it so that items get auto stacked when you pick them up. With the new item flagging ability I also added in a bounciness attribute because uh, why not? And with that all being finished, that's going to mark the end of our little inventory system, for now at least. I'll leave the temporary user interface in until the game matures a bit more and I can lock in a particular design, but feature-wise it should be relatively complete. I know last video I said I'd be making a start on combat in this devlog, but there's been some future plans put in place for a new animation pipeline, so I'll be holding off on doing any animation related tasks until that's all up and running. Next devlog I'll be focusing all my efforts on environment design, so hopefully getting the scenery and the visual style of the game more developed. I'm incredibly excited for that. It'll be a very visual process, so hopefully it'll make for an interesting video. It'll take me a few weeks to get that completed, so if you want to follow my progress in the meantime, then there'll be a link to my Discord and Twitter down in the description. Also, I've just given the tiers on the Patreon page a bit of an overhaul, so if you're wanting to support my work on Arcane and there's a reward tier over there that looks worthwhile to you, then I'd be eternally grateful for your help. There'll be a link on screen or in the description for that as well. Anyway, that's enough rambling from me. I'd like to thank all my current Patreons. I'm just a little dude trying to pursue his game development dreams and all of you guys are enabling me to do that. So a uh, massive thanks to Game Dev Goose, Level Pixel Level, Heatblaze, Brad, Zeno, Michael Matson, Pat Allen, Nicholas John Celestin, Ben Kidd, Owen Van Kraspeek, Arthur B and Nicholas. Thank you all so very much and of course to everyone else who's watched this video. I'll see you all in a couple weeks and I hope you have an excellent day.